Misunderstanding IELTS writing could be the difference between a 6 and a 7, or even a 7 and an 8 on test day. By watching this video, you'll gain a complete understanding of the IELTS writing test so you can get the score you need. Did you know that the writing test is the most challenging part of the IELTS test? The average scores worldwide in 2019 show that writing is harder than every other part of the test. Why is writing the hardest? Well, there are a lot of misconceptions and bad advice about what IELTS writing is all about. In this video, I'm going to properly clarify IELTS Writing Task 2, Academic Writing Task 1, and General Writing Task 1. First, we're going to look at Writing Task 2. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to get the best IELTS videos on the internet. IELTS Writing Task 2. In IELTS Writing Task 2, you are going to write an essay that will look like this. It'll have an introduction, two to three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. The differences between the essay in the general test and the academic test are small. They're really not worth mentioning. In the general test, the question prompt is slightly less complex. This is what you will see on test day. On test day, you will open up the question booklet and see a task two question prompt that looks like this. But before we get to that question prompt, here's a few key things you need to know about writing task two. First of all, you're going to have to write one essay. That means on test day, you have one chance to get it right. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. The essay is worth 66% of your overall writing score. So writing task two is worth two thirds of your writing test score. So you should spend 40 minutes on task two and 20 minutes on task one. You have to write more than 250 words. Make sure you write more than 250 words. Writing more than 300 words is a waste of time. So you want to write between 250 and 300 words and then edit. The type of essay you need to write is discursive. It's a very common misconception about the IELTS writing test that there are different essay types that they need to learn. There are no advantage-disadvantage essay types. There are no problem-solution essay types. The essay type you need to write is discursive. What's a discursive essay? There are a few important things to understand about a discursive essay. A discursive essay can be on a variety of topics, such as education, environment, or crime. They explore a specific idea related to the topic, perhaps online learning, pollution, or recidivism. And they approach the topic from different angles. Some people think this, other people think that. Here's what you must do. First, you need to take a position or a point of view. You need to agree or disagree, or be for or against something. Then you need to balance your personal observations and opinions with different perspectives. Finally, you want to draw upon real life experience or knowledge. Now, if we look back at our IELTS question prompt, we'll see an important set of instructions at the bottom. Let's read the instruction carefully. It says, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. So when you're writing your essay, you need to include relevant examples from your knowledge or experience. If you want to learn more about how to give great examples, check out this video. The link is in the description. So if we sum up exactly what IELTS wants you to do in writing task two, it would be present a clear, relevant, well-organized argument, giving evidence or examples to support ideas and use language accurately. 
So now that we know broadly what you need to do on test day, let's take a closer look at the essay prompts and the various essay questions that you're going to see. IELTS essay prompts. As I mentioned, you may have to write on a range of topics. These topics could include art, business, children, communication, crime and punishment, you get the idea. Now, these are the broad topics, but we need to look a little bit closer at some of the ideas that you'll need to think and write about. If you write about zoos, you may have to write about the pros and cons of zoos, or how to save endangered animals, or the benefit of city zoos versus safari parks. If you have to write about work, you may have to write about the future of work and whether it's promising or not. You may have to write about the pros and cons of working from home. Or you may have to write about remote working. Is it as good as it sounds? Or if the topic is transport, you may have to write about public transport inefficiencies, or traffic issues in big cities, or the safety of new forms of transport. So, we started with the broad topic, and then we looked at the specific ideas within that topic that you'll have to write about on test day. IELTS essay question types. There are common question types that you're going to encounter on test day. These are not questions that determine the type of essay you're going to write. They tell you the questions that you need to answer. There are five main types of question that you're going to encounter. There are opinion questions. Do you agree? To what extent do you agree? You get the idea. There are advantages, disadvantages questions. Like, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? And so on. There are also problem solution questions. What are the problems? What are the solutions? You get the idea. There are also discuss both views questions. They may ask you to discuss both views or discuss both sides of the argument. And there may be double questions. What do you think? And why is this the case? Or who should be held responsible? And what can be done about this? One thing you may want to consider is that you may get a combination of these questions on test day. For example, you might see, what are the disadvantages of this? What can be done about this? Or, do you agree? And what is one solution to this problem? So be prepared to answer any of these different questions you might get on test day. A critical tip. Keep in mind, the number one reason students don't get the score they want is they fail to write on topic and they fail to answer the question. It's not a language issue. What people tend to do, and what many IELTS teachers suggest, which is wrong, is that you should memorize essay templates based on the questions. This is bad advice and will lower your score. Test takers should note that they will be penalized for irrelevance if the response is off topic. Don't use memorized templates. They won't allow you to answer the question in a flexible way on test day. Idea generation and planning. On test day, you need to brainstorm clear and relevant ideas, then you need to make a plan to organize your ideas, and then you write. When you read that question prompt and the essay question, spend some time thinking them through deeply. Don't start writing straight away. After a while, a couple of good, clear, relevant ideas will emerge, and that's what you write about. If you're struggling to come up with clear, relevant ideas, be sure to check out the E2 Topic Toolkits available on the E2 platform. Let's briefly touch on scoring, because this is what it's all about. On the E2 platform, there is a video that goes into a lot of depth about how you're scored and how, by understanding the scoring, you can maximize your scores. It really is all important.
IELTS tells you that you're scored in four ways. Task response, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource or vocabulary, and grammatical range and accuracy. But we can break this scoring down into 10 important parts. How well you answer the question or questions. How strong your position is. How well you internally structure and link within your paragraphs. How well you structure and link within your overall essay. How wide-ranging your vocabulary is. How precise your vocabulary is. How flexible your grammar is. How accurate your grammar is. How good your punctuation is. And finally, how good your spelling is. When you get writing feedback from E2, you'll get full feedback based on the criteria, just like I've shown you. Our feedback is given by ex-IELTS examiners or trained experts who understand what you're doing right and wrong and can give you the advice you need before test day. Writing task two, recap. In short, you need to write a discursive essay of 250 words or more, and you need to fully answer the question. There are a lot more details to how to write a very good essay, which you can find on the E2 website or in our live classes. We'll now look at academic writing task one, or you can skip ahead to this time to see general writing task one. IELTS, academic writing task one. In IELTS academic writing task one, you have 20 minutes, to write a 150-word description of a line graph or line graphs, a table or tables, a bar chart or bar charts, a pie chart or pie charts, a diagram or process, or maps. You might also get a combination. You may get a pie chart and a table, or a line graph, and a bar chart. According to the instructions, you have to summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. This instruction is critical, and it's often overlooked. Let's go through this in detail to find out what you need to do on test day. Summarize the information. This is an information transfer task. There's no creativity or speculation. You'll analyze the data that's in front of you, and then you'll present it using academic language. According to IELTS Official, this task assesses your ability to identify the most important and relevant information and trends, and to give a well-organized overview using language accurately in an academic style. Never speculate and never give your opinion about what you see. Simply analyze the information and present it. Select and report the main features. The second part of the instructions say you have to select and report the main features. Notice that it says main features. It does not say secondary features or all features, it says main features. Considering that you're only going to write 150 to maybe 180 words, you have to make a clear decision on what information you're going to include. What is the big or important information that you see? And what information are you going to either ignore or mention quickly? You should also support your writing with important data, usually numbers, taken directly from the image. You need to support the main trends and features with data, so make sure that the data you select is accurate. This is critical if you're aiming for a high score. Make comparisons where relevant. This instruction is also important with any data that shows a big change over time or different trends, this will be highly relevant. For example, 
You might compare the growth in one time period compared to another time period, but you don't always have to do this. As the instruction says, make comparisons where relevant. This is something you'll need to practice. Analyzing the data, deciding whether the data is relevant or not, presenting the data in writing, and then getting feedback. Analysis and planning. On test day, you must spend time analyzing and planning before you write. First, you want to read the overview statement that describes the image, and then carefully analyze the image or data so that you understand what's happening in it. Because the image will often use different time periods, you want to understand the changes over time. The reason that we plan is you want to decide on the structure before you start writing. If you want to learn more about how to structure your IELTS Academic Writing Task 1 paragraphs, including all the possible image types, then be sure to watch the Methods video lessons on E2 that take you through every step of the process. Just like with the essay, it's important to understand that you should not use a template to write your answer. It won't allow you to be flexible in how you present the information. Time management. Remember, you have 20 minutes to write 150 to 180 words. This is only worth a third of your mark, so you don't want to spend any more time than that. You'll also want to have a little bit of time at the beginning to plan and at the end to edit and check your writing. Next steps. Right, now that you've got a good understanding of IELTS Academic Writing Task 1 and Task 2, go on over to E2 Test Prep for more practice with our top quality questions and get feedback from one of our expert teachers. My name is Mark, and I'll see you next time. Or stick around and check out General Writing Task 1. IELTS General Writing Task 1. In IELTS General Writing Task 1, you are going to need to write a letter that will look like this. According to IELTS Official, you're going to need to do this. Follow English letter writing conventions, including what order to put information in, what style to use, how to start and finish a letter, using language accurately and appropriately, organizing and linking information coherently and cohesively. When you open your question booklet on test day, you're going to see a situation like this. You're moving to a new country to go to university, and you are also looking for a part-time job. You have a friend who lives in that country. Write a letter to your friend. In your letter, greet them and apologize for not staying in touch more. Tell them why you're moving to this country. Ask them if they can help you find a job. You need to write a response in the form of an informal, semi-formal, or formal letter of at least 150 words. You need to write a letter based on this situation. The situations you're asked to write about are common everyday situations like writing to a university accommodation officer about problems with your living arrangements writing to your boss about time management problems you are having at work, writing to a local newspaper about a plan to develop a local airport, writing to a real estate agency to sort out problems with the heating system in your house, writing to a friend about buying tickets to an upcoming music concert. From these situations, you need to work out what the tone of your letter is going to be. That tone might be informal, semi-formal, or formal. If you're unsure about how to change your tone, make sure you watch this video on tone by Jay. Let's take a closer look at this prompt because we can get some very important information from it. Question prompts and bullet points. The question prompts all look similar. You'll see a scenario that gives you some background information and three bullet points. It's extremely important that you carefully read the prompt and the bullet points. 
Each bullet point is asking you to do something different, such as greet, tell, ask or request, explain, invite, provide details or information, express wants and needs, express dissatisfaction or complain, give your opinion, make suggestions or recommendations, and apologize. The more deeply you understand what you need to do in your letter, the better you'll be able to fulfill the aims of the letter, and the better score you'll get. Letter Writing Conventions As we saw, IELTS wants you to follow English letter writing conventions. This includes how to start and finish your letter. If you don't know the person's name, and it's a formal letter, start and end the letter by writing, Dear Sir, Madam, and Yours Faithfully. If you've met the person, and it's formal or semi-formal use, Dear Mr. Smith, or whatever their name is, and Yours Sincerely. If you know the person well, and it's an informal letter, use Hello, Jack, or Dear Jack, or whatever their name is. And Best Wishes, or Yours Truly, or Kind Regards. If you want to learn more about how to write these letters properly, be sure to check out the methods lessons on E2 Test Prep. Using your imagination. While the situation and bullet points will give you the content of your letter, you will need to use your imagination. You'll want to create a kind of story or narrative so that you can use more interesting language. But don't worry, you don't have to be super creative. For example, with this prompt, you will need to use your imagination to talk about the country you're moving to, the university you're attending, and the course you'll be taking, as well as the job you want. Scoring. You're scored on four criteria. Task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, and grammatical range and accuracy. But we've broken it down to a few more parts that look like this. How well you cover the bullet points. How well you develop the ideas in your letter. How well you internally structure and link within your paragraphs. How well you structure and link within your overall letter how appropriate your tone and formality are, how wide-ranging your vocabulary is, how precise your vocabulary is, how flexible your grammar is, how accurate your grammar is, how good your punctuation is, and how good your spelling is. When you get writing feedback from E2, we score you on this criteria. Our feedback is given by ex-IELTS examiners or trained experts who understand what you're doing right and wrong and can give you the advice you need before test day. On test day, you should only spend about 20 minutes writing 150 to 180 words. Remember, this is worth one-third of your overall mark. Next steps. Right. Now you've got a complete understanding of IELTS writing. Now it's time to head over to E2 Test Prep to get practice and feedback with one of our expert teachers. Be sure to like and subscribe for the best content on YouTube for IELTS. My name is Mark, and I'll see you next time. Our feedback is given by ex-IELTS examiners or trained experts who understand what you're doing right and wrong and can give you the advice you need before test day. On the E2 platform, there is a video that goes into a lot of depth about how you're scored and how, by understanding the scoring, you can maximize your scores. It really is all important. If you're struggling to come up with clear, relevant ideas, be sure to check out the E2 topic toolkits available on the E2 platform. If you want to learn more about how to give great examples, check out this video. The link is in the description.